do you use Final Cut Pro and have no clue how to color correct or color grade your footage? Let me help you out. What's up, y'all? It's Terry Warfield. I hope you're having a good day so far. If this is the first time on my channel, a big fat welcome to you. And if you're part of the fam, you're part of the squad, you came back, welcome back. Make sure you drop a hashtag up in here so I know you're up in the building. I gotta apologize in advance for all of you people that hate slow motion. Listen, I love slow motion. You can get a whole lot of slow motion on this channel. And that video was just a bunch of clips that I didn't use from other videos. And I figure I might as well put them to good use. But anyways, let's do a quick fam check on the channel. Y'all know I gotta do this to get this out the way. We are at 8,678 of us in the squad, in the family, man. So I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Make sure you please subscribe if this is your first time here. And make sure y'all share this video, like it, and all of that stuff. I can only grow with your help. So what we gonna do today? Since you don't know how to do your color corrections and color grading, I figure I will go ahead and help you out. Now listen. This is just my workflow. There are a thousand ways to skin a cat. This is just my way of doing it. I'm not saying that anybody else's way is better or worse than mine, and I'm not saying mine is better than anybody else's. This is just stuff that I've learned over the years through trial and error, probably watching other people's YouTube videos. I don't know. But anyways, three things that you need to make sure that you do before we get into editing. Number one, like this video. Number two, make sure that you take your time exposing your shots correctly. I cannot stress that enough. The reason that you want your shots exposed correctly before you get them into the computer is we want as much data there as possible when it comes to color grading. If your shot is underexposed or overexposed, that's data that you can't get back. Especially when we're using like Sony cameras that are only 8-bit, we can't even push our files around that much anyway, so we need all of that data intact. The third thing you need to do is make sure that your white balance is set before you start filming. Have you ever got some of your footage back home and realized that one part of the clip is like orangey and the other part is kind of cold because the clouds moved or you moved. Listen, set your white balance. I'm not saying you need to be a professional white balance checker, but use your camera's built-in options. If it's sunny outside, set it to sunny. If it's cloudy outside, set it to cloudy. Use your camera's white balance to your advantage because there's nothing worse than getting your video clip in the post because it ain't like pictures where you can go through on each picture and set the white balance. Ain't nothing worse than getting your footage in the post and having that one clip where it's one color on one end and another color on another end. But now that we got that out the way, let's go ahead and jump into Final Cut Pro. Let's do this. So now that we got Final Cut Pro open, I'm gonna link an old video and I gotta let you know. It was it was like in my earlier YouTube days, so it is kind of cringe, but it's got some useful information in there, mainly adjustment layer. So the link to the video is right up there and also down there in the description. If you need to, leave this video, go watch that video, download the adjustment layers, install them and come back. The adjustment layers are gonna make our editing life so much easier and Final Cut Pro doesn't come default with those. The third thing we need to do in Final Cut Pro before we get started is we need to open up video scopes because we're gonna adjust our exposure and our white balance first. So let's go ahead and do that. So to open up video scopes, we're gonna go to view, we're gonna go to show and viewer, and then we're gonna go to video scopes. And we're gonna change this box right here to Luma. So what this is, this is kind of like a histogram um, where it's basically going to show us where our exposure data is. So right here you can see at the bottom where it says zero, this is our shadow. All of my mid-tones are right here in the middle and then my highlights are up here. So Terry, the next question is how do we, how do we mess around with this thing where you actually don't mess around with the scopes themselves? What we're going to do is we're going to drop an adjustment layer onto our clips which I already have lined up right here, they're already pre-cut. The first thing we're going to do is go over here and grab an adjustment layer. We're going to grab the base even though the base and the grade are technically the same thing, they just got two different names, and drag it down on top of our footage and then stretch it out over all of our video clips. Now the way adjustment layers work is whatever is beneath the adjustment layer, it doesn't matter what it is gets affected by the top adjustment layer so the first thing we're gonna do is go over here to effects and we're gonna drop a color board onto our adjustment layer or press command 6 it doesn't matter which one they take you to the same thing let me go over here in the upper right hand corner if I click on this then it opens up our controls for exposure which is like our highlights midtone shadows 
our saturation, and also our color where we can go and kind of manipulate the colors. Right now, we're gonna focus on exposure. Now, what I like to do, and again, everybody's process is different. Me, I like to go and set my exposure first on a per clip basis. The reason why I'm saying per clip basis is because I don't wanna change the exposure on let's just say my first clip and then have the rest of my clips under that same adjustment layer because what if they don't need it? What if my first clip needed to be brighter? What if my second clip needed to be darker? So on and so forth. So what I'm gonna do to combat that is get my blade tool, shortcut B, and I'm gonna cut right where my clips are cut at, right on my adjustment layer. Now, when we go to color grade our footage, we're not gonna do this because we want the same look across all of our clips. But for this part, we need to set our exposure individually on a per clip basis, and that's what we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and hit P so that we can get our pointer, and then let's go focus on the first clip. So let's go back to our scopes real quick. Now, in general, you want most of your data in the middle. That means you have a good, well-exposed image. It's not too bright and it's not too dark. What we wanna do with this is we wanna pull the highlights and pull the shadows away from each other, which will automatically, in turn, introduce contrast into our video clips. You'll see what I'm talking about in one second. Now, before we get started, right here, this is your global slider. So this is gonna adjust everything. Your shadows, your midtones, your highlights. This is gonna increase or decrease the overall exposure of the whole video clip. We don't wanna do that right now because this is actually a pretty well exposed clip. So I'm gonna reset this by using this arrow in the upper right hand corner. And what I'm gonna do is start with my highlights, which is how I prefer to do it. Now pay attention on this part because this is where it's about to get good. We're gonna take our highlight slider and move this up. Now I'm gonna intentionally move it too far so you can see something. If I keep pushing this right here, what you're gonna see is a flat line. Now what this means is I've pushed my highlights too far and now those highlights are clipping. Clipping means there's no detail left. Also, if you import footage and you have a horizontal flat line over your highlights or in your shadows, that means that data is gone, you cannot get it back. So ideally, we want our highlights right below 100. Now, this is where it's gonna vary on a per clip basis. I can push this a little bit further than 100 without clipping my highlights. Not every clip is gonna be like that, but for example's sake, I'm gonna bring it right back under 100. Now, for our shadows, we're gonna do the same thing, except we're gonna pull them in the opposite direction. We're gonna pull these down to where it just hits zero, and same thing, you may be able to push it a little bit further if you want to, but as a rule of thumb, we want it right at zero. And then if necessary, we can take our mid-tones and maybe bring up the mid-tones to make it a little bit brighter or bring them down. This is personal preference, but as a whole, this is what we wanna do. We wanna stretch this video clip so that we cover the most of our exposure range and get the most well-balanced exposure, which will make our color grade look even better. Now, I do wanna stress before we go through the next clips and do the same thing, the scopes are there for reference. You still wanna keep your eye on your video clip because ultimately you decide how you want it to look. The scopes are just there to help you reference and help you see if your highlights are cut off, your shadows are crushed. These are strictly for your reference. So let's go ahead and move on to the next clip, the same thing. Uh, again, this is a well-balanced clip. All of my data is right here in the middle. I can go ahead and pull my highlights up. Let's bring them close to 100 and pull my shadows. And like I said, it automatically introduces contrast. Now here's an example of why I said you need to monitor your footage because if I pull my shadows down to zero, look how dark my shoes get. I don't want it to look that dark. So I'm gonna bring my shadows back up just a little bit and I'm happy with the way that looks. Let's turn it on and off. Boom. Let's move on to the next clip, same thing. Bring our highlights up, bring our shadows down just a little bit and this one didn't need a whole lot. It's a pretty well balanced clip. I might bring the mid-tones down just a tad and then move on to the next clip. And I'm gonna pull my highlights, bring down my shadows. Same thing with the next clip. Bring my highlights up, shadows down some. Last clip, bring my highlights up some. Here's another example. I don't wanna increase my highlights too much because then look at my street. I don't like how bright that is. So I'm gonna bring my highlights down some, bring my shadows down some, and boom, here's our before and after. Now, we already did our white balance in camera. If you did your white balance like I told you to, that you shouldn't have to do this part, but let's just say we did need to go and correct our white balance. Now you can do this with the same adjustment layer, but me personally, I prefer to just add another one. So let's go ahead and drop a base layer on here again on top of this one. 
Now this one I'm gonna stretch all the way out because I want all of my video clips to have a similar color temperature. So we're gonna do the same thing, hit Command 6 or grab a color board and drop that puppy over there. And you can do this a few different ways. Remember I said there's a thousand ways to skin a cat. This is just how I prefer to do it. Go up here, your right hand corner to your inspector window. Change this to color wheels and scroll down. And what you'll see right here is a temperature slider. This is the easiest way to adjust your white balance. If I wanted to make my clips have more like that summery, sunny day, then I would obviously push my temperature to the right to make my clips warmer. You can see already how that changes it. Or I can move it to the other side to make it cooler. We also have a tent slider if you want to change the overall tint of your video clips. This already has the look I want. I want it like that cold, moody look. So I'm going to reset this and delete this adjustment layer. And then lastly, we want to go ahead and do our color grade. Now, color grading is totally subjective, man. There's no right or wrong way to do it. You can manually go in here and adjust your own color, which I'm going to show you how to do in one second or you can use a LUT. Now I know LUTs are like the big thing. I use LUTs all the time. In fact, I have custom LUTs that I do sell. And uh, if you wanna support the channel, they are down in the description, by the way. You do get eight LUTs. There are dope LUTs and uh, they're only $9.99. So go ahead and make sure you grab those after this video. But LUTs are basically for all intents and purposes of keeping things simple. They're like glorified filters. That's basically what, what they are to the average person. And they're a great way where if you don't wanna go through and mess around with your own colors, they're, they're a great way to get a specific look on a video without having to do all of that. So let's do two things. We're gonna go through and create our own look, and then we're gonna go through and use one of my custom LUTs, which is actually what you saw at the beginning of this video. So let's go ahead and grab the gray layer. Now again, these adjustment layers are the same thing. They're just labeled different so that you know which ones are which. Let's go ahead and drop this gray layer on top. And then we're going to stretch this out all the way because we want all of our clips to have a consistent look to them. So same thing we're going to do. Grab a color board, bring it over here. Now, instead of going to our exposure tab, we're going to go to our saturation tab. So the first thing I'm going to do is introduce a little bit of saturation into all of my clips. I'm going to push this to like maybe like 35. And again, just like our exposure, this right here is our global slider. We can still go into the highlights and only boost saturation into our highlights or midtones or shadows or pull saturation out of those areas. So it works the same exact way. Now, here's where we can go through and adjust our color. So let's go to the color section. So from left to right, here's what you're going to see. These are all your colors of the spectrum, red, orange, yellow, green, cyan, blue, so on and so forth up and down is going to adjust the luminosity or the intensity of those colors and it's the same thing highlights midtones shadows global so let's try to recreate like an old military war film type look so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to take my midtones and move those over to the green now, automatically you can see how that works now if i were to move this up that makes my green either more intense or i can pull greens out making it less intense. Now here's something that you need to remember. All colors are made up of other colors. So if I pull greens out, then I might introduce more of another color into the picture. So just keep that in mind. Now, I know I want my highlights to be kind of orangey or yellowish. So I'm gonna take my highlights and move those over up here. Move it over to the orange and right there. So just like that, I got a totally different look than what I had. Now, if I wanted to take this further, I can continue to go through and mess around with the colors. And I do recommend to get some practice, just start grabbing video clips and mess around with the colors to see if you can come up with a look you like. That's how a lot of LUTs are created. And because we dragged this across our whole thing, now all of our clips had that same look. Now granted, these clips don't really go with the theme of what I just picked, but I just wanted to give you an example. I'm gonna use a LUT instead. So I'm gonna delete this gray layer real quick and I'm gonna grab another fresh one and put it right on top. Now, Final Cut Pro has a built-in LUT tool that you can use. Now, me personally, I prefer to use MLUT by Motion VFX. It's free, it works a whole lot better. So I'm gonna grab this and drag it onto my gray layer. And then go into my inspector and go to MLUT presets. And I already have mine pre-installed, so Terry's LUT. So just look at this real quick. Boom, 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 boom. With LUTs, it's really, it's, it is that easy. So as long as you did your base adjustments like your exposure and your white balance, then it's easy to just throw a custom look on top of that or create your own. So I used in that first clip the LUT called Drama. This is one of my favorite LUTs for at least my videos. However, I don't run LUTs at 100%. So I'm gonna reduce this to about 50. 
and I like the way this looks. It's got like that colder kind of cinematic look to it. And with LUT, you can go through and adjust like the highlights, mid-tone shadows. There are some other things like film grain and things like that you can introduce depending on the LUT loader you use. Now, if you want to on that top adjustment layer, you can drop in things like sharpening if you want to add sharpening to your entire video those fake letter boxes if you like to use those personally i hate them i mean the opportunities are endless with adjustment layers but now you see how i kind of go through to color correct and color grade my video clips all right man so now i hope you got a little bit more information when it comes to how to color correct the color grade your videos i highly recommend get yourself some practice man go out there get you some video clips and mess around so this stuff becomes more like second nature for you the more you do it the link to that adjustment layer we talked about is in the description along with terry's lutz which we talked about also make sure you grab those man support the channel i really appreciate each and every one of y'all by the way wash your hands and keep your distance from everybody because everybody getting that you know what we're gonna talk about that on youtube but anyways that's all i got for you i'm out peace and chicken grease terry warfield peace